Welcome to part two of Evaluation Basics for Non-Evaluators. So now Jen has a better sense of what it means to have her project evaluated. But it's actually more involved than she had imagined, so now she's concerned about how much the evaluation will cost. Here's an excerpt from the ATE program solicitation about the evaluation requirement. It states that the evaluation budget must match the scope of the proposed evaluative activities. And while that's certainly important, it doesn't provide a lot of specific guidance in terms of how much people should budget for evaluation. There is a general rule of thumb about budgeting for evaluation, and it's that 10% of a project's cost should be allocated for the project evaluation, and that's for evaluation in any context. So that's a good place to start, and then you can go up or down from there, depending on what level of evaluation is needed for your project. The fact of the matter is, if evaluation is going to bring value to your project, you have to fund it adequately. If Jen asked for the maximum amount for projects funded through the new to ATE program track, her grant would be $300,000. If she dedicated 10% of the total project budget to evaluation, that would mean there would be $30,000 over three years for evaluation, or $10,000 per year. Mainly, these funds will go towards the evaluator's time, including salary and benefits, and travel expenses. It's always a good idea for the evaluator to make site visits, and the closer the evaluator lives to the project, the lower the travel costs will be, which means they can provide more services to the project. Another major cost may be the evaluator's overhead rate, also called indirect or facilities and administrative costs. There may be other miscellaneous expenses, but these are the main ones. Bear in mind that if and how you apply this guideline depends a lot on the level of evaluation needed and other factors that are relevant to your specific project and host institution. But Jen would rather use those funds for services that will have a direct impact on her students. She's wondering why she should spend money on evaluation. We'll address that question in the next video in this series.